Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekend Show. Final day, Sunday. I hope your games today went as planned and there was no animosity on and off the field of play. The referees all went home happy, the teams, the players, the coaches, the managers, the committees, everyone went home happy in a real world. Did it really happen in your league? We'd love to know. Malatons, X the line, dot com. How did the respect campaign go? Did you show loads of respect? Because we do need to keep our referees within the game, especially our young referees. And you've seen them, many of them wear the yellow armbands. That's to suggest and tell you that they are still minors and under the age of 18 years of age. So it's just like a deterrent to let you know, remind you that verbal abuse and aggressive behaviour will not be tolerated by any league, excuse me, any league or committee member who are involved and active on that day. And it's a good thing, I suppose, as well, for the likes of us, don't cross the line. We've been there 2003, um, betraying this message, having a zero tolerance towards aggression, verbal abuse, racist comments and bullying within grassroots football. Now, we all know, and we all taught you that don't cross the line really, really supports the referees on the sidelines towards this. And many managers, many coaches, many parents and committee members respect that the work, the work that we do on and off the field of play. And we do it week in, week out. And we're all together. We're all there supporting each and every one here because at the end of the day, we love to see good football. We love to see kids smiling. We love to see kids happy, parents happy, going home, banter. We love that. We watch it, listen to it. And we can, we, we can choose that amongst any aggressive behaviour all day within grassroots football. And the majority of us can also do the same. Um, I get loads of phone calls from managers, from parents. Um, even we chat to committee members as what's gone on throughout the day, throughout the weeks, throughout what's happened within teams and how the referees were subject, even plenty of referees, I talked to plenty of referees subject to verbal abuse or aggressive behaviour. Now, thankfully, thankfully, um, even myself witnessing it and watching it, 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 it has calmed down, but I know it still goes on and we don't like verbal abuse or aggressive behaviour towards any of our referees and we always portray the message and bang the drum that we are the first to support any referee subject to any verbal abuse or aggressive behaviour on the field of play. There's ways and means to watch and support a game. And we talked about that on last night's show, the way you've even got to get your team to respect the referee. If the referee blows that whistle, forget anything. Do not argue, even if you disagree with any decision, because the referees are impartial and when they blow a whistle, they give something what they've seen. If a million other people have seen something different, you can't do anything whatsoever about it. That referee's decision is final. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. So you've got to sit back, you've got to take it, and you've got to be use your authority as a manager, as a coach. And if you've been trained to just count to ten, that's all you do, count to ten. Now we do know that many referees make mistakes as well. And what we say to that is they're only human. But we also agree that respect should be shown both ways. There's two ways to respect, isn't it, from both sides. So what we expect is um, when you see or hear about reports going in, now I'm, as I said, behind the referees for any verbal abuse, aggressive behaviour. But as we've just said there, referees do make mistakes as well. They're only human. So what is the difference sometimes in a game that referees can make mistakes and hear things from one team when it's not that team, it's someone else's team from the sidelines. That can happen as well. Um, arguments, things like this. Now the referee puts a report in um, about situations like this. Now if it was the other way around, managers put a report in week in, week out in, in terminology terms write about that manager, mark that manager on the manager's cards about the referee, um, what side would the county FA take? Now, what we're looking for, all your local county FAs, even the FAs, what we're looking for is I'm always su supportive of managers and coaches as well. And unfortunately, I haven't been in a situation where I didn't just see it to the referee, but I have gone back many, many years ago about a referee who was just 
shown cards willy willy nilly honestly that's going back many years ago by the way um, and it wasn't not in just one game it was every game anyone questioned it was a red card it was a yellow card and there's a couple of referees that we do know uh, doing the rounds that will also do that you don't upset them because the card comes out now that's entirely up to that referee but you've got to have rights as well even though managers and coaches are volunteers um, and 99.9% .9 of them are unpaid doing a voluntary job getting the kids off the streets you've got to have respect towards those coaches and managers as well because people question that without the referee there is no game and I am one as well no ref no game and I'll subject that to everyone behind it in other words that referee walks away from that game you've got no game really because the manager or coach has to do that but I also believe that the backbone of grassroots football are the managers and coaches the many volunteers who run these teams taking the kids off the streets because if you didn't have a manager or coach you would not have a team and if you haven't got a team you wouldn't need a league and if you don't need a league you don't need a referee so let's all work it out perspectively here let's look at it the bigger picture and just say who's the most important in grassroots football because what these managers and coaches go through volunteers DBS checks, level one coaching badges, um, you name it, welfare coaching, um, you name what they need, and they need a lot, a lot, safeguarding as well, of course, before they can go out and run a football team. It costs them a fortune. There's no allowance for them. They're just paying through the, the, the nose, and to me, I think volunteers should be free. Now, you can look on the referee side, Fantastic, you can class them as a volunteer, but they get paid. They get paid from the leagues, from whoever pays them, the managers, if they do games. The coaches, the managers, the volunteers get nothing and they're subject to a lot of criteria checks as well before they can get involved within grassroots football. Now, all I'm looking for, um, we see stats, Stats week in, week out about how many referees have walked away from the game. This can come from the government bodies, the FA or the local county FAs. How many referees have walked away from the game? Um, is that due to verbal abuse, aggressive behaviour, or is it due to referees walking away from the game because they have uni? Referees walking away from the game because they have a new job and they can't fit the referee in, the officiating in anymore? Is it all down to verbal abuse? in grassroots football because when you see social media posts that's what it makes out to be now the stats that we're looking for we always see the stats to say referees have walked away for so many referees have walked away because of the abuse they can't take anymore but what you don't see are the stats on how many managers and coaches have walked away from a game because they can't stand being fined they can't stand being accused and they just had enough of the amount of money it's costing to run a team now we don't see these stats on how many teams fold how many managers or coaches have won a case when a report has gone in against the team we always get the stats about the referee but we don't get the stats about the managers or coaches now, are we saying that the managers and coaches are never right? They're always wrong. And the referee is always right, even though we all admit the referee make mistakes as well, because they're only human. But because they put a report card in and it's wrote down, the referee hasn't made a mistake whatsoever. This is what I'm trying to do now because I'm just trying to be fair within grassroots football because everyone knows that we don't cross the line we stand behind referees yes we do but we also support managers and coaches as well because there's some crackers out there and we don't like them to see to to be on the wrong end of the stick we don't we just want fair play all around we class safeguarding as fair play don't we everyone has a duty of care now any manager who's guilty of <laughs> you know, proven verbal abuse, aggressive behaviour. Because the fines are, 
well, just unreal now. The, the, the fines that you can be paying for an under 7s, under 8s team is up to over £200. Now that's on top of the parents' fines. And that could be for swearing towards a referee, not controlling your parents. Now that law needs to be you know, looked at, not controlling your, your line. The manager's a volunteer. The manager, honestly, is looking after kids. And yet, he has all that burden on his back, really, if something goes wrong. One of those parents has a go at the referee. It's the manager, the club, the whole club that pay a fortune. And yet, the referee can never be wrong. And if they are making mistakes, come on, let's forgive and forget. But the, the manager, the referee still gets the, the payment. Now we're looking at grassroots football, football as general here. And I'm trying to be fair with everyone because I do get a lot of managers ringing me up and saying, look, this didn't happen, that didn't happen. You know, what, what are we supposed to do about it? So, I don't see the stats. I'd like to see the stats. I, I think many managers out there would like to see the stats. I think many referees would like to see the stats as well, just to see, keep it all in check. Let's all put it down. And if you've got a thousand referees who have won against a thousand managers or coaches, we've just seen cases in the post office where they're all guilty because of a fault, because of something that's going wrong. Are we really saying that the referees' cards that go in, and, and they do get help, many of them get help, fill them in by the way, um, 100% right, accurate. Because both sides will always have witnesses. Always have witnesses. So what's the point of having witnesses if nothing comes of it? And these can be really top class witnesses. These can be safeguarding officers. These can be nurses, matrons. These can be professional solicitors as witness statements. But even that gets knocked back. And I've known of many witnesses who put in what has actually gone and it's been knocked back. So, I'd like to know how many um, managers out there, if you have, could you tell me, let's just do it ourselves, how, how many have gone in and won a case against your local county FA? If a report has gone in against the team, if you have fought it, and if you've appealed and it goes up, it nearly doubles or trebles when it, if you're appealing, you lose that. Um, just how many have won a case against a referee or any report from a committee that's gone in? I'd like to know. And I think the majority of people out there would like to know as well. It's only grassroots, it's only getting involved in things that, you know, that we all want to know. Stats should be available for everyone to see. They really, really should. And that's all I'm appealing for to see all the stats and then everyone can say well look there you go so many managers have won so many referees have won you know so it balances itself out uh, like we always say when we're looking at Premier League games and decisions go against a team everyone says ah yeah but by the end of the season those decisions will balance itself out I do the same on the stats what we've just been talking about and all we want to do is have a look at the stats and the fines the amount of fines that's being paid and surely the government bodies, the likes of the county FAs, have got them on file so people can be open and honest and take a little look or they can produce them and let everyone know. Your thoughts, Mal, at don'txtheline.com Now, we had to mention that. We had to mention it. I thought it had frozen again there on SoundCloud, but it hasn't. Um, so, um, Thankfully, we're still going ahead. We won't touch, no keyboard. It's just frozen there, but the show is going on. So we're, we've still got like five minutes of the show. Anyway, I'd like to, you know, this is the point of view. We want loads of respect. We still want to defend our referees because we don't want verbal abuse or aggressive behaviours thrown at them while the game is going ahead. And the reason why we're doing that and supporting the referees is because, really, it's for the kids. Don't cross the line. The kids... Verbal abuse from IRA parents or spectators gets thrown out week in, week out, on and off the field of play. Now we look at that and we start thinking, wow, 
it's towards the referee, but all the kids, it's the kids that are hearing me. And do they believe, do they believe that their mum and dad start shouting me, then it's quite all right for them to shout it back at their teammates, at opposition, or towards the referee. So, that's why we support our referees, because they are the target. They are the target for irate parents and spectators. And I know that sometimes spectators or parents can go out, have a really rough night, come back not feeling too good, and the referee gets the blame for everything. Once that whistle goes, then it's accusations left, right and centre. And that could be from both sets of supporters. But we wanted to calm down. We want to keep our referees within the game. And there is punishment now. There is fines coming out, not just from leagues, but also from the local county FAs and the FA. And I think there's bans coming out. But we're hearing different things, different stories. And being involved in grassroots football, believe me, it's not just about Merseyside. I get phone calls from people from all over the country and I listen to what they've got to say. And I can't give it, I'm not as advice line, but I can only just say what's happened and what, what the cases that I've heard uh, and I've gone and been proven or they, well, they've been proven. Um, I, I just like to hear what cases haven't been proven and what cases have been default. And it's gone the way of a club or team. And I'm sure there'll be many committees on the clubs and teams who would like, wow, I'd like to know that as well. Let's see how fair grassroots football really is. That's all I'm trying to do because we now, we always said that the FA do not own football, but I'm afraid it's looking like that now with the whole game system. We want this, we want that. If you're a volunteer, you ha have to do this. Volunteer, volunteers should be paid, should get expenses. You can't have volunteers. It's my honest opinion, it's the next best thing to slave labour. If you've got volunteers left, right and centre running your company while you're getting fat and there's money pouring in from fines, from anything else other than earning it, then there's a difference because also in governing bodies that we're looking at, people get paid for doing admin. Now, there's a lot of admin coming towards us from grassroots leagues that the managers have to do now. They have to make sure their admin is done. Me, I'd go right back to the car tomorrow where you put your team players down there, your market referee, put your scores down, hand the card in, and that's it. You go off that, and someone in the committee just writes it all down. The team's simple. But now we've got the systems on computer, there's a million things that you have to do. A million. I think it's unfair sometimes, because uh, even I get fed up doing the admin, <coughs> because I've got to do admin when I get home. Because It's easy to forget to put your scores in. And if you don't put your scores in or you don't put your results in and give your feedback and your marks towards a referee, then you are subject to a fine. Or now, what I'm hearing, suspension as well. Um, volunteers, team volunteers. I'd like to go home after a football game, put my feet up and wait till the following week for the next one. Just get the fixtures and there you go. I shouldn't have to, whether it takes 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 4 hours, whatever it takes. I shouldn't have to go on and do all that admin as a volunteer. I think we need to look at the bigger picture for volunteers. Now, how many more feel like me or how many volunteers out there say, love it, I'd do it all day like this. I think it's fantastic. If you don't feel fantastic and you are subject to a workload and also fines. We'd love to hear from you, Mal, at don'ttextaline.com. Add me as a friend on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social network sites. We've got to be fair, I'm supporting referees, but I've also got to support managers and coaches. I can't just pick and choose, because if I think the manager or coaches are getting a raw deal, then I've got to speak about that as well. And especially because we're, we're speaking about referees getting raw deals on and off the field of play week in, week out. So, yeah, let's keep it fair and let's make sure that grassroots football is all brought together. I can never say family anymore. You've heard that now, the grassroots family. To me, that's gone. There is no grassroots family because everyone seems to be on a different wavelength for some reason. We like, like to and want to 
bring people together and we believe that we have been doing that since 2003 and we'd love to continue doing that with your support. We, we, we have the support of government bodies, we have the support of all grassroots football teams. We're, we're only there for everyone. We're only there for the kids basically to make sure that they enjoy playing football and develop their skills in the proper manner. And the proper manner means when you go out and watch them, just encourage them. Fair play on and off the field of play is all we expect from everyone involved in grassroots football. If you can do that, then you'll make the game better. And maybe we won't have any disputes with referees, coaches and managers and committees. It'll all be honky-dory running superbly. Let's hope it can do. Whenever you're out and about, please let me know. I'd love to know your thoughts on what we've been talking about on the topic today. Feed us back, maletontakethelion.com. As I say, on social media, I'm there all day. And myself, Matt Lee, and all the team at the Grassroots Yo, Don't Cross the Line, Respect Programme, and our Heart of Gold initiatives. Have a great evening. Put your feet up, relax, and we'll see you on Friday, hopefully, with our young commentators. Good night, God bless.